surrounded. Number one, with the presence of God. By the way, ladies and gentlemen, the Lord is here. Amen. God is in this place. Everybody says, praise the Lord. And uh, aren't you happy this morning that you as well are surrounded uh, with real people, with people who love the Lord like you, uh, real people not, not meaning that they are perfect, uh, they cannot commit mistakes, they cannot commit wrong. I'm not saying that. Real people, in other words, uh, they come here without pretensions. Their wish like you is to worship the Lord and to thank Him because He had been very, very good to His to her life within this whole week. Amen? Hello! Amen. I'd like you to shake somebody's shoulder and say, I am happy to see you today in the house of the Lord. Come on. Success is promised by the Lord to every child of God. We're happy to hear the testimony of Brother Hermie. I call him Mickey Boy. He grew up literally in, uh, in Acts. I think he was second year, or they were second year when Adishai brought him to the church. And ever since, he fell in love to Acts. There is yet another, uh, used to be young people, we are waiting to come back. But it's just that the matter is living in, uh, in the West Coast. One time he sent me a message expressing yearning and the missing he has in the church. I'm talking about Kuya Jason, the brother of uh, Ati Marjina, uh, 2013 Miss of Wanga. Jason said, once an axe is always an axe. Will you say yes for that? Amen? Amen. He missed already the church. Well, this morning, I just so feel, in the name of the Lord, to preach this sermon which I am going to entitle Respond Yes and Not Excuses I'm talking about how we respond to God to His call without the Jew without a double thought without even uh, estimating the situation right away in faith when the, when the Lord calls when you hear His voice respond Yes. Amen? Amen. I'd like us to open our Bibles, ladies and gentlemen. Now, if we can stand, uh, God is really very on fire for the Lord. God bless you, son. And that should be our passage. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like us to open our Holy Scriptures to the book of Luke, chapter 14, beginning verses 16 to 21. I think I should be reading from the New International Version. Then if we can share Bibles together. Praise God. Okay, if you are ready, I will lead you in the reading. Join me after. Here we go. Jesus replied, A certain man was preparing a, a great banquet and invited many guests. At the time of the banquet, he sent his servant to tell those who had been invited, Come, for everything is now ready. But the all alike began to make excuses. The first said, I have just bought a field. I must go and see it. Please excuse me. Another said, I have just bought five yoke of oxen. I'm on my way to try it now. Please excuse me. Still another said, I just got married, so I cannot come. The servant came back and reported this to his master. Then the owner of the house became angry and ordered his servant, Go out quickly into the streets and alleys of the town and bring in the poor, the crippled, the blind, and the lame. God bless the reading of his word. I would like to invite us. Let's just bow our heads and commit ourselves to God for praise. You may be seated. Elvis Presley, do you know him? He is uh, monitored as the king of the rock and roll. Do you know, before he was named as the king of the rock and roll, he actually was an evangelist. And uh, he was a singer, church singer. 
There was this, uh, during the 80s, the late 70s, a very popular tele-evangelist by the name of Ginny Swaggart. This, uh, this, uh, this is how I have heard. Ginny Swaggart and uh, Elvis Presley were actually cousins. And they were contemporary in their growing, growing years uh, in, their, in, their, in their response to the call of the gospel. You just imagine. And then, and then what had happened to the man? Because later, he wasn't just involved in singing, you know, worldly songs. By the way, there are, uh, we call this secular music, or worldly songs that, you know, are clean songs. Many of them are love songs. And there are also, uh, you know, other genre that are really clean songs. But I would say we need to be very careful because most of the secular music, worldly songs, are polluted ones. Are you with me? Amen. That is why it's still always safe to sing and to listen songs or music that are worship and praise songs. No reasons at all. Amen? Amen. Let's give the Lord a clap of praise. Because Elvis Presley became bound to drugs. He became uh, a drug dependent. That along in his journey though, he became uh, very famous people to the extent of adoring him. Uh, I've not seen that so much because Elvis is not my generation, but uh, Michael Jackson. Have you seen uh, some some concerts of uh, you know big names where people would just faint because after seeing their idol, who are this guy in your generation? Uh, Shakira, uh, I mean, you have so a lot, you know, because of the advent now of technology, in a push of a button. Uh, Yun, Elvis Presley, people would go on frenzy. Uh, some would feign and adore and already hit to the extent of worship. I mean, they worship this man then as the king of the rock and roll. But the question is this, what happened alone that this person who already was following the call of God deviated. Turned his back away. And eventually the leader was saying, no, no more, no more, no more to you. There are other names in our time. Uh, I'm not very much sure how he is doing now. Justin Bieber, how we pronounce his name? Justin Bieber. Justin Bieber. Justin Bieber. Uh, because there's another Bieber, Bieber, I'm sorry. Justin Bieber, okay. Uh, Justin Bieber grew up in church. He played drums in church. He sang along the choir. Then there was this break. That is why, ladies and gentlemen, we really need to be careful, not just on our trials. As well when the blessings come. Because there often, when the blessings come, we easily do forget already the call of God into our lives. Hello? Amen. We easily get blinded. Now, Justin Bieber alone, after he had the break, 12 years old, he was discovered via YouTube. He became, you know, a sensation. Then his life dwindled down, spiraled to the oblivion that he involved to a lot of vices. But accordingly, some of the young people told me, Pastor, no more this time. Justin already rededicated his life back to God. There's another woman singer, uh, is, is it okay. Katy Perry? Yeah. Katy Perry is a very, very own pastor's daughter. PK. Grew up in church. Loved the Lord. Then stardom blinded her eyes. And one day, you know, in, uh, in a national TV, and uh, you can see it online, it's archive online. She denounced her faith in the Almighty. Hello, amen? amen. I'd like you to place your palm to you. It says, we are about to say and to ask God, Lord, be merciful to me that I shall not slide back. That okay? Amen. We're going to pray that the Lord will hold us in His palm. That, you know, the calling of God into our lives will not just be good only as to the middle, but it will be up to the end. Everybody says, Praise God. Praise God. Are you ready? 
Place your palm to your chest and say that with me. Almighty God, hold my life that I can continue in the end. Amen. Let's give the Lord a clap of praise. The Lord here in the story was offended because uh, he actually sponsored a big banquet. Younger generation do not understand anymore what is meaning to banquet. Much this is a moira. All you, all you think and you have in your minds uh, is party. Well, party. Banquet is something bigger than a party. Banquet is really, I mean, super, uh, super meal, super extravagant, where the party goes on not just for an hour. Banquet will go even over a day. Have you joined or attended for a party that goes to be seven days? And, and food is being uh, is being served by the family, not just a lunch, but service, uh, but I serve from breakfast, lunch to dinner. That's what you call and the sound in our report is what you call banquet. Bisaya makos, bisaya na pangkipi. Banquet. Do you know that the Lord, when He calls somebody, when He calls a person, He is actually invited to an extravagant life. Are you with me? Amen? Amen. I'm not talking though of the physical. I'm talking of the holistic. Ladies and gentlemen, listen to me. Because you and I are being called by God. Hello, are you with me? Amen. You and I, you know, are following something which is not just an ideology. We're following something which is not just a religion. Or an ordinary, uh, ordinary, pro uh, ordinary prompt. Which we something had just catched, you know, or seized out from the air. Or something which is just a like pigment, pigment of our imagination. Ladies and gentlemen, we are following, we're following a voice, a call of God Himself. Amen. 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 Let's give the Lord a clap of praise. Now listen to me. When the Lord calls us, when the Lord would want you to do something, do not refuse Him. Do not turn your back. And do not say no to Him. Do not hesitate. But you will have to understand though, following the Lord are not just all comforts. There will be trials. There will be storms. I guarantee you, when you follow the Lord, you will be scarred. But each scar, ladies and gentlemen, is counted by Him. Hello, are you with me? Each scar is being proportioned by God with an equal glory. Let me tell you, ladies and gentlemen, God is now cheap. The Lord doesn't play uh, a dirty game. The Lord is fair. The Lord is faithful. Hello, are you with me? Amen? Amen. We give Him a clap of praise. The story here was about the king. He had his guest. He sent them an invitation. Inviting them for a banquet. And the time came for the dinner, for the banquet, to be done. All servants are all around. Food are already about to be served. But then one to the other, I think there are three or four invited guests here. Each to the other gave excuses. Anyone gave excuses? Gave excuses. Uh, would like to ask you, are you making excuses to God? <laughs> Ah, thank God for His mercy. Thank God for His grace. Maybe one of the reasons why you are here today because the Lord will remind you. God will remind you. Now, put somebody's shoulder and tell, tell, tell the brother, tell the sister, say, God is reminding you today. Some of them are funny excuses. Okay, I think the second or the third person said, I cannot go to the banquet because I'm just duly married. <laughs> I, cannot, I cannot go and see the king. 
Let me tell you, ladies and gentlemen, the highest thing under heaven, highest thing here on earth, is to stand before the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. No money, no person, no fame, no nothing in this world, no, no one in this world can ever compare to such an experience, to such a stand when you are before the Lord. When you're following the Lord. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Let's, uh, let's see this. Brothers and sisters, it is a prestige to be invited by the King. Say the word prestige. prestige. You know what is prestige? Prestige is the other word for, for fame. The other word for honor. Prestige is the other, another word for uh, greatness. Grandiose. Uh, prestige is the other, other meaning of uh, greatness. I mean to say, when the Lord calls you, it's something which is famous. It's something which is grandiose. It is something which is inexchangeable. Something which is incomparable. And you will have to be warned, though, ladies and gentlemen, because the world, the kingdom of God, and this world are two different, are two different realms. To what is acceptable to the kingdom of God often are not in this world. Hello, amen? amen. Give you an example. When you read the Bible, God is happy. Kingdom of God. Amen? Bring the Bible in the middle of your worldly friends, how they will react. Especially among God, amongst guys. They will laugh at you. Especially when you're surrounded with maybe a pull the door. There are eight friends and a glass and eyes and uh, each will say, okay, your, your, your clothes, your... And everyone will say, oh, okay, okay, and then give it to you. Oh, what you have in your pocket? Pass yet, bro. No, you are in a group. Ah, that cannot be because we are in a circle of friends. You will be offending us. By the way, what's in your pocket? And you pick, pick out, and it's actually a New Testament Bible, and say, the world. The world. You need to be oriented on that because we are not detached in the world. I know what I'm saying because I have a plenty of friends that are from the world. I cannot avoid, you know, when I'm in school, when I am together with stakeholders in this world, and uh, good because they are, they are knowing and they are understanding and they are respecting that I am following Jesus. I'm a child of God, I am, I am born again. But let me, let me tell you, ladies and gentlemen, as you follow the Lord Jesus, as you follow the King, it is something which is very great. Amen? Amen. Do not just shrug your shoulder and say, ah, you know, uh, I am born again. You know, wala kasi magawa sa buhay, kaya nagpasa na lang ako ng Bible. Eh, paano? Wala akong magpuntahan eh. Kaya nandito ako sa Acts. Huwag ganun. Hello, amen? amen? Kailangan hindi lang isa sa mga choices si Lord. Kailangan you will have to understand the Lord is your only reason. Amen? amen. Kasi apart from Him, apart from the presence of God, it's a miserable life. Are you with me? Amen? amen. And you know what? The invitation is given to us many. But the number are making their excuses. Si Lord invites ng maraming, maraming, maraming tao talaga. But the sad thing is this. Sa karamihan ng tinatawag ng Panginoon, there are a good number of people that are saying no. Making their excuses. Now, listen to me. Are you not thankful to the Lord that amongst the few, Amongst the few who said yes to God, you are one of them. Amen? Amen. Thank God. I'd like you to close your eyes and raise both of your hands and tell Him, Lord, I am thankful. I am grateful to be one of the few who responded to you. Amen. Let's give the Lord a clap of prayer. That's it. Here we go. Immunity and protection 
comes when you say yes to the Lord. Say the word immunity. immunity. Say protection. protection. Now, I will not scare you right this very moment, but I will bring you to certain realities to what is happening all around today. Are you aware that Ebola, Ebola, you know, in Western Africa now, Sierra Leone, and uh, Liberia, okay, these two nations that are, what is this, uh, infested with Ebola. Did you know that Ebola can come in the shores of the Philippines at any time? One Filipino that can be affected or infected and would, you know, think of to go and come home and take a vacation, you know, pass the idea, because Ebola is a virus transmittable through droplets by sneezing and, uh, you know, transmission is very easy because it is airborne and transmission can be by, I mean, uh, exponential in, uh, was, what is this, uh, exponential in rate that if this cannot be con contained any time, this can become a pandemic even to affect our country. Hello, are you there? It's not to scare you, but listen, listen to me, ladies and gentlemen. Mersco are still around. Hello? Mersco is still around. What else? There's so many sicknesses and diseases today around in the world have not yet attacked our country. But you know what? When this will happen, in, when this will happen, they will claim thousands of lives you know, in the Philippines. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we will need immunity. Say the word immunity. <laughs> we will need protection. I tell you, ladies and gentlemen, immunity and protection only comes from the Lord. Amen. Are you with me? Amen. This is what the Lord says in Isaiah chapter 19 verses, uh, chapter 1 verses 19 to 20. Are you still there? Amen. It says, if you are willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. But if you refuse and rebel, you shall be devoured by the sword. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken it. This is a promise of immunity. This is a promise of protection. The Lord says, if we obey Him, if we follow Him, the Lord promises we will enjoy to eat the good of the land. Hello? I said a while ago about banquet. When you follow the Lord, you know, you will, you will be blessed. When you follow the Lord, God shall see to it that you are secured under His hand. You're being kept. You're being, uh, you're being fed well. You're, you're being protected. However, it could be your and say, but if we refuse, say the word refuse. refuse. Say it one more time, say refuse. refuse. Refuse is saying no. Refuse is by excusing. And then this is worse. If we rebel, we will be devoured by the sword. Sword in just literally blame. Sword is meaning sicknesses and diseases. Sword is meaning catastrophe. You know, last year, uh, Ormok, no, not Ormok, Leyte, and uh, what place is that? Uh, the city that was inundated. Tacloban. Tacloban is such a uh, prosperous, uh, prosperous city. And uh, if you remember during the 70s, because the Globan is the city of the former First Lady Imelda Marcos, uh, it, it was attended very well by then the late President Ferdinand Marcos. As they said, in every square inch of uh, the Globan, they are cemented, concreted. I mean, high rises, the Globan is where the place where it is connecting, you know, uh, the islands of uh, rather 
connecting one island to another, the San Juanico Juanico Bridge. And then one day, you know, the greatness of this city was being challenged. Destruction came. There was this great flood. There was this great water, not coming from not coming from the mountains, but coming from the oceans. And you know what? Totally, just in a matter of 10 to 15 minutes, the whole of the city was inundated. Hello? Okay. It takes the power of God to destroy a city in just short as 10 to 15 minutes. The whole of the city, including the mayor, including the congressman, there was no poor or rich that wasn't affected. The whole the entire city, many dead. I mean, many died. Many was washed out by the waters. Now think of it. If that can happen to some Wonga city, everybody says, God for me. Say now with me, say, God for me. God for me. So, Bisaya na si Bako. So, uh, another word is, uh, yeah, God for me. That can God, that can, that cannot happen. So, now, ladies and gentlemen, the Lord has a promise. The Lord gave us a promise of protection and immunity. That is when we when we follow Him, when we heed His call, when we respond to His call, and when we do not excuse. Say the word when we do not say excuse. I know, and I believe, the Lord is talking to everyone here. Because one way or the other, we have individual callings. We hear different, or rather we hear uniquely the voice of God asking us to do something. Asking us to respond to a certain, to a certain mission. Asking us, you know, to do something for a specific, you know, job in the kingdom. 